Hello, beautiful Taurus, and happy birthday to the May Taurans. I happen to be one of those with you, so happy birthday to us. Happy, happy birthday. This month, your ruling planet is going to go retrograde. She's already been out of bounds, but now she's going to go retrograde. And this is only going to be a part of increasing the retrograde energy that we've got going this month, Taurus. So about mid-month, I promise you, you're going to feel a little, little bit of a shift in the energy as we start to travel backwards. Now, this is not the heaviest time of retrograde or slowdown that we're going to feel this year, but this is a pretty significant time. Now, I also want to tell you that your second house is really very heavy this month, Taurus, and I think that is nothing but good news. You've got planets coming into your second house. Then the ruler, Mercury, of your second house is going to step in there, bringing the sun with it as well. Then there is a new moon there. So this is going to be what we consider a financial peak for you, Taurus. So you Use this energy and timing quite, quite wisely, okay? All right, Taurus, let's jump in and talk about what's happening for you this month. Right at the beginning of the month, we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy of Scorpio. Now, this is going to be a right across the street from you in the energy of Scorpio, so in the opposite sign, right? Now, a full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to create a shift here. It's going to bring your awareness, being in Scorpio energy, to your deepest desires and maybe even your deepest power struggles that you're having in relationships right now because it lights up the seventh house. The seventh house is about conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships, right? So this is where you are interacting with another person. You have married to them for some reason. It doesn't have to be a marriage, but it could be that you are connected to this other relationship for some reason that does have benefit in your life. Now, can a full moon bring breakups? Yes, it absolutely can. Plus, the ruler of your seventh house, Pluto, is already in retrograde. So you are reviewing if the relationships in your life have a supportive enough structure to stay in your life. But I as equally believe that this full moon could be telling you, hey, we need some big kid level help over here. Who's my next mentor? Are we ready to go to the next level, right? Me, myself, and I, this is one of the most critical relationships that we have. But either way, this full moon is going to show you what you want here, what you desire. And if you're struggling, struggling, struggling to fulfill it, you might be willing to let go of your hands and make some different decisions or just let it go as is. Now, on the 11th, we're going to see it be a little bit of a busy day. First of all, Mercury is going to move into the energy of Gemini. Now, remember, Mercury in the general acts as your financial planet because he's the ruler of Gemini who's in your second house, okay? Now, Mercury moving home into the energy of Gemini, he's feeling good. He's like, welcome to my casita. It's a lovely, lovely energy. But what it also means for you is that communications around money, decisions around money, you're going to be making these so much more. And it's not just money. It's the things of value, your value. How are you speaking? How are you presenting yourself? Do you have something you could be teaching or communicating as a creative skill, second house, to be able to make money with? This is a time where you'll certainly be making some financial decisions based on your value, your self-esteem, and with some of your possessions as well. I wouldn't be surprised if you are wanting to invest money in maybe a big ticket item that you've been wanting or you're making a big investment, I would just tell you to the best of your ability, if you can do it before Venus goes retrograde, that's always really, really a good idea, okay? Now, also on the same day, we see Saturn going into retrograde. Now, Saturn is going to begin this retrograde at one degree of Aquarius. So over here at the tip top of your chart, 10th house, this is in the career. So what has happened as he's come into this Aquarian energy, as you started to get serious about your career, about your work life, about who you are in the world, what you have to give to the world, right? So you started to get a little bit serious about that and also probably very social. And now Saturn's going to continue this retrograde and walk it back all the way to 25 degrees of Capricorn. So make sure you locate those 1 to 25 degrees to Capricorn in your chart so that you can see what it is that you will be working on. But ultimately, as Saturn is in this retrograde, you are going to re, you're going to re-look at, revise, re-edit, reconnect, right? You're going to discover if these areas of your life are serious or if they need your attention to continue to come up. Can they come to the next level? 
Do these have, do these areas in your life have structure that you can actually stand upon, right? In your career, you're going to find out just very quickly that maybe your technology needs to be firmed up. Maybe you need more collaborations. How are you doing in the social world? What's your long range goal with your work life, your career? And if you're not in the working world anymore, what's the long range goal for you? You may have to get serious about answering that and then as this energy backs up to this ninth house, it could also be about you're reviewing your teaching, you're reviewing your own higher education training and things like that. So don't be afraid to step back if there's more training or there's more, even if there's travel. Some of you Torrens, even though travel has been very, very restricted, you may see that um, travel even in a mental sense or even via Zoom or any of these online platforms, maybe you're going back home, you're visiting with family via technology or something like that, okay? On the 13th, also a busy day, we see Mars moving into the energy of Pisces. Now, Mars in Pisces is always interesting because Mars wants to do things. He's action. He's energy. He's assertion. He's like, now, 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 now. Let's do these things. Let's win. Let's get some things done. But he's also your desire. What do you desire? Because when you know what you desire, you'll move towards it, right? In the energy of Pisces, we're not always clear. It's like, I'm not really sure what I want here or I'm not sure how I feel about this. So it can kind of feel like a little bit of an in-between the worlds kind of energy. For you, Taurus, it's lighting up your 11th house space. This is friends, social groupings, organizations, um, long range plans, goals, dreams. With Mars here, it's not a very active position. So you may be having to trust your intuition with how you're moving, who you're interacting with, what you're doing. Uh, you're not really in a position here where you're fighting so much for what you want. I think more so you're being led. It's more of a leading place. Now, Mars is also our energy of conflict, right? If there is a friendship from the past, an organization, a plan from the past, something like that, that you are in conflict with, it will most certainly show up on your table and it will show up and maybe there's a little resolution or there's some tension so that you can go ahead and clear the air. Either way, Mars in Pisces wants to be creative, wants to be forgiving, and wants to walk between these worlds. So it's a very intuitively led kind of placement, okay? Now, also on that same day, Venus is going to step into her retrograde. Now, Venus is going to retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini all the way here, and then she's going to end this retrograde at 5 degrees of Gemini. So the whole thing's going to be happening in this Gemini energy, and she will be coming out of this retrograde um, June 25th, okay? This retrograde is going to be in your second house. Venus is your ruling energy, so this is going to have a strong pull on you this month, okay, Taurus? And Venus is still also out of bounds. So as she's out of bounds... In your second house, in the energy of Gemini, which we also know is a financial energy for you, you could be thinking outside of your normal sphere. You're going back to maybe an opportunity that you could take on to make money, a creative talent. Maybe you're getting rid of some of these possessions because you're like, yeah, I've had this. I've loved it for a long time, but now is the time for me to let it go. And you're letting it go and maybe it's bringing value into your life. The other thing I think of is Taurus, for the love of goodness, go back to the things that you were passionate about before, your creative talents, your self-esteem, the things of value absolutely lie there. During this Venus retrograde, I would tell you, it is a good idea for you not to take on a ton of responsibilities. Instead, evaluate if the ones that you already have are genuinely getting the attention that they need from you? Is your money getting your attention? Is your budget, and including your energetic budget, right? Are you worn out, Taurus? Because if that energetic bu budget is being stripped, this is a great time to adjust and to attend to that, okay? On the 14th, we're going to see Jupiter stepping into his retrograde. Jupiter is going to retrograde from 27 degrees right over here of Capricorn and back all the way up. I just thought of back that up. He's going to back it up to 18 degrees of Capricorn. He'll be coming out of retrograde September 13th. Now, when Jupiter is retrograde, this is a beautiful place here in your ninth house for you to reevaluate, Taurus, 
Where do you maybe need more training? Where do you, where can you go back to some training, some teachings, some belief patterns, some ways that maybe you wanted to expand or publish or broadcast yourself out before and you didn't have the courage or you didn't have the confidence to do it. This is a great place to take Jupiter back there with you and look at if you're in a position to do it now. It is a wonderful energy for you to look at where are you over committed? Where are you overconfident about what you can deliver based on the energy, the resources, the whatever it is that you have? In the ninth house, it's publishing, marketing, broadcasting, higher education, spiritual things. For some people, Jupiter retrograde will bring things from court back to the table or it'll begin to bring a resolution to those things maybe to the table as well. So whatever it is, go back to it. In this next handful of months, knowing that Jupiter is trying to illuminate the wisdom for you of something you've already been working on. These things have already been in your wheelhouse. Now they're energetically sound enough to work on so that you can bring them forward as we get towards the second half of the year, really towards the end of 2020, okay? On the 20th, we see the sun leaving Taurus zone and it's time for Gemini season to light up. So now, we have got Venus retrograde over in Gemini, your second house. We have got Mercury over in Gemini, out of bounds. Mercury is out of bounds, so it tells me decisions that you're making about your money, your finances, the way that you make money are outside of your normal sphere, right? We've got both Venus, the value, and Mercury out of bounds, so think out of your box this month, okay? But then we invite the sun in who brings light, heat, life, vitality. All of this is shaking up this second house here. And you're social. You're curious when the sun moves into the energy of Gemini. Oh, well, what? how do you do that? How, can I get training for that skill to learn how to do that? Because I bet I could add that to my repertoire and maybe I make money with this. Oh, how do I post that online? Because I don't need this anymore. So how do I sell that and get the best dollar for it? Oh, yeah, I forgot I know how to do this. And you get to raise that self-esteem. And you do it through communication. You do it through being social. You do it through recognizing the value in other people. And it shines like the sun right back on you. Now, to make this second house even yummier, we're going to throw in on the 22nd a new moon happening in Gemini. So this is where you're going to plant those seeds of intention, okay? What's the fresh start? What's the fresh perspective? It's a wonderful time to start something new, not necessarily something new, but something that is presented again with your finances, with things of value, with creative talents. It's a wonderful time to maybe even, you know, social things. I think about navigating landscapes. You could be traveling. You're going to see someone. You are traveling by moving all of your furniture around because the feng shui doesn't feel good. It's a beautiful day at this new moon to also be prepared to start making some different decisions in this area of your life if things feel a little bit wobbly off course. Now, as we end this month, we're going to see Mercury leaving the energy of Gemini where he's been homey and comfortable and moving into the energy of Cancer. This is going to light up your third house. Mercury is a natural ruler of the third house in the traditional zodiac. But as he moves into the energy of Cancer, what happens is we start to get a bit more emotional. It's an emotional thought process. We connect with memories. We connect with siblings, we're talking, we're communicating, we're spending time with neighbors. You know, you're doing that social distancing barbecue. Communication gets busy, but it gets nurturing. It gets to this energy as well, where I think the question with Mercury and Cancer for you, Taurus, is what is taking up my mental real estate? What's important? Mercury wants to make some decisions for you here. He wants to present you with information and help you make a decision. So in the energy of cancer, are you nurtured? Are you nourished? Do you feel supported in your speaking, in your teaching, in your writing? Um, do you feel like you're supporting your siblings? Remember, Mercury just came out of your second house. This could also be a wonderful time where you're putting out content. And content doesn't have to just be online, you guys. It can be you're putting out content at the grocery store and you're smiling at people. You understand that the decision of what you're spending your energy on is really important to be nurtured and to be fed at this time. So you'll be making decisions like that. Now, Mercury and Cancer as well, 
This could be you buying a house just as easily or you could be selling it. I would tell you if you're buying the house at this particular time, Cancer Energy, you actually would probably get it for a pretty good price because Venus is retrograde. So whatever this manifests for you as in your month, I look forward to hearing all about it in the comment section down below. I hope you will check out the new uh, Eat and Greet series. That's what I've decided to call it, the Eat and Greet series, where astrologer friends will come over to the Cyber House, we'll have a snack, and we'll talk about astrology. We'll teach you. Nadia Shah has been here, Brian Coulter, Sasha Benedetti. Terrence Gardino is on the way, Heather Eland, as well as Patrick Arundel. So I hope you will click through and check out some of those videos, get the information, and we'll also not just be bringing you topics. We're going to be bringing you some techniques as well so you can learn how to actually apply the astrology as a technique to your astrological practice, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to hearing some of your feedback about the new video style um, down below. I love you. I'll see you next month.